Good morning all. So we have completed uh, the population ecology content. Uh, we have seen what is uh, population, what are the components of a population and uh, different parameters that influence the population size and population density. So in this uh, presentation, uh, we are going to see the next uh, uh, unit that is uh, the population interactions. So we will be seeing, we have already seen that population is actually an assemblage of uh, individuals belonging to the same species uh, residing in a specific area at a specific time, isn't it? Now, uh, just residing together uh, is not actually the purpose. They interact with each other. The interaction can be between the uh, members of the same species, which we refer as the intraspecific interaction, and it could be between the members of uh, two different species, two or more different species, okay, and that is what we refer as the interspecific interactions. So, in this presentation, we will be seeing both intraspecific interactions and interspecific interactions. And uh, under interspecific interactions, we will be learning the different uh, positive and negative interactions. Okay, we will be looking into it in detail with uh, examples and different types of each, okay. So, what is uh, population interactions? So, uh, the interrelationships uh, between members of a population for their survival and for their su success in an ecosystem. And that is what is referred as the population interaction. So, organisms are associated and interrelated with one another and their survival depends upon the interactions, uh, these interactions. So, uh, Put into a simpler uh, term, it is species interaction. So, interactions between members of a species or in between the species, between uh, members of two different species. So, it is actually population interactions. It is actually the um, interrelationship and interactions between organisms of a population for their survival. And these uh, the, um, interactions may be between individuals of the same species or between individuals of two or more species, right? So, depending upon that, we have uh, two different kinds of uh, population interactions. The first one is intraspecific interactions, where the in, uh, interactions are, it is among the individuals of the same species. That is why intraspecific interactions, the term comes, right? The second one is interspecific interactions, that is, the uh, interaction between the individuals of two or more different species populations, right? So, the two different types of populations, I mean, sorry, interaction, population interactions are identified based upon uh, the individuals which are interacting. If the individuals interacting are uh, from the same species, we call such an interaction as intraspecific interaction. On the other hand, if the individuals come from two or more different species, the interaction is referred as the interspecific interactions. Okay. Now, there are two kinds of intraspecific interactions. One is competition and the other is cooperation. So, intraspecific competition and intraspecific cooperation. We will be looking into it in detail in the coming slides. Uh, interspecific interactions, now, here what happens is the interaction between the species it could be beneficial to both the interacting uh, individuals or it could be harmful to both the individuals or it could be beneficial to one while harming the other or it could be neutral to both the individuals. Right? So, based upon the uh, interactions between species, based upon how it is interacting, what is the effect on the interacting species, the population, interspecific population interactions can be of three types. Okay, that is uh, neutral interactions, positive interactions, and negative interactions. So, these are the three kinds of interactions uh, based on how the interaction is affecting the interacting species, interacting individuals. Okay, neutral interactions, positive interactions, and negative interactions. Uh, in the year 1971, uh, Autumn categorize population interactions into two major types actually. One was positive interactions and the other was negative interactions. While neutral interaction was included 
along with the positive interactions. Okay, but here we will for the convenience we will be dividing into three. Now, what is positive interaction? <coughs> In the positive interaction, populations help one another. So the interaction being one way or reciprocal, that is both the ways, both are getting the benefit. So uh, both the partners or both the interacting individuals are not getting negatively affected. Okay, so they are, at least one of them is positively um, benefited. They are benefited, right? So two interacting species are there. If at least one of them is getting benefited uh, by the interaction, we call such an interaction as a positive interaction. So first one is mutualism and second is uh, commensalism, which you are supposed to study uh, as per your syllabus. But there are many other. For example, you have a proto cooperation, neutralism, etc., etc. Okay. But um, in the negative interaction, what happens is uh, in the interact in this interaction, the interacting species gets harmed by the relationship. So any one of the interacting species, if it is getting harmed by the interaction, we categorize it under negative interaction. And uh, uh, they include like competition, immensalism, predation, parasitism, antivirus. There are plenty of examples. Three are supposed to be, uh, uh, you are supposed to study, uh, that is competition, predation and parasitism. So, intraspecific competition. Um, intraspecific competition is a um, cooperation interaction where individuals belonging to the same species compete for the same resource. Okay. And usually, intraspecific competition is density dependent. Uh, the reason is with the uh, increase in population size and population density, the competition between the individual for the same resource increases. That is, with respect to a specific resource, for example, food, the population size when it is very low, the competition, is also, the competition among the individuals is also very less. But as the population size increases, the food as a resource, it becomes limited because as such in the nature, the uh, resources are finite or fixed. Right? That is, the resources, it keeps on diminishing when it is being used uh, for a prolonged period of time. So, when the population size increases, uh, the um, what you call food as a resource is also getting depleted. It is getting used up. So, what happens as a result is, it reaches a particular point where uh, the individuals of the particular species, it has taken or used up most of the resources and there will be such an intense competition among the individuals that the uh, ecosystem or the environment cannot support further increase in the population, okay. further increase in the population density. So what happens slowly and slowly the population size, uh, the change in the population size becomes zero. There won't be any further increase, right? Without any decline, it will remain in the same status. So that is what happens in an intraspecific competition. So uh, here, members of the same species compete for the limited source. And this results in the uh, most fit individual or the fittest individual among the population surviving and reproducing for the sustenance of the species. In the sense, only those the fittest of the individuals will survive. Right? And it will reproduce and thus helps in the uh, sustenance of the species. Species will survive, right? So in the next generation, what happens is the, the character or the genetic uh, uh, this composition will be passed on to the next generation, right? Uh, that is one aspect. Another is members of the same species have a similar resource requirement. They compete for, so they compete for food, uh, for water, for space. In the case of um, plants, they also compete for the um, light, sunlight. Okay. Uh, then during the breeding uh, season or breeding time, the um, what you call uh, the reproductive individuals among the animal species, they compete for mates for getting the best uh, character passed on to the next generation. 
you know, all these are required for the survival of the individuals of the uh, population. At the same time, it is also required for reproducing and helping in the sustenance of the species. Okay, so um, we can see intraspecific competition. It is actually density uh, dependent. Now you can see that um, this uh, intraspecific competition it uh, involves both direct as well as indirect interactions. It needn't be always direct. That is, it is it needn't involve um, the two individuals of the same species coming together and confronting directly. It could also be indirect. So, in the intraspecific competitions can be both direct or indirect interactions between the members of the same species. Now, direct competition is one where individuals compete directly. Okay, and uh, one type of direct competition is the interference competition. You can see over there, there's a first one cited interference competition. Here, what happens is members of the same species uh, directly compete for the limited resource, and this can involve uh, direct fighting, stealing, or even combat. Okay. This also involves animals claiming a territory. Okay. During, uh, you know what is territory marking, which we have already seen in the first uh, um, chapter, first module, right? The, uh, territory and home range, what are the differences between them? Okay. So you can see that territory is a confined place which is being defended by an individual. Okay, defended by an individual means it individual usually remains in that particular area and it will not allow the entry of other individuals of the species into that territory, into its territory. Okay, so in uh, this interference competition also include um, animals claiming their territory <coughs> and this usually includes, I mean this uh, usually excludes other animals from entering the area from entering the particular specific territory. So here usually you can see that interference of uh, competition occurs in those species that establish hierarchies through aggressive behavior. Uh, what is a hierarchy actually? It is one dominant member will be there, a few subdominants will be there. So uh, that is a hierarchy. So, uh, and this hierarchy is usually maintained in animals, not in all animals it is seen, but in those animals where such hierarchy exists, it is maintained through aggressive behavior. So, here what happens is one or more individuals within the population, they hold a very dominant uh, status in the population over the other members. So, through direct interaction uh, with the other individuals, these dominant ones uh, take the over power. Okay, so through direct interaction, these individuals will uh, limit or even prevent access of uh, more subordinate individuals to a particular resource. It could be space, it could be food, or it could be anything, even mate also. So that is interference competition. Okay, so in populations where the resources are scarier, more aggressive behavior are likely to evolve. So that is that kind of a behavior is also seen. So here Interference competition is one where members of the same species um, directly compete for the same limited resource. Okay, and this could be seen in two different aspects. One is in it involve uh, fighting, direct fighting, or it could be stealing, etc. Okay. Secondly, it this is also is seen where animals claim a territory. And this territory uh, marking is usually meant to exclude other animals, uh, other members of the same species from entering their area. Okay, and such a kind of uh, competition is usually seen in those species that establish hierarchies. Okay, among the species, among the population hierarchies. And here, what happens? One or more individuals uh, to hold a dominant position over the others, they show aggressive behavior. Okay, so there is direct interaction between the individuals for uh, maintaining a dominant position among the population. So that uh, usually um, the what you call uh, this type of competition involves uh, occur when where 
individuals within a species to establish uh, territories and limit the access of others to authoritative users. Okay, so I hope it is clear. Right. Now, second type of competition is actually indirect competition. Here, the um, individuals competing does not come in direct contact. And that kind of competition is known as exploitative competition. Okay. Unlike the direct interference competition, here the individuals involved, they doesn't they don't come in direct contact. Instead, they deplete a resource which is shared by other individuals. So what happens is the other individuals they suffer a loss as a result of the competition. Okay. And here, usually, for example, one um, specific example we can cite is plants. So, you can see that the plants, they compete for light. Okay. So, an adult plant, uh, the seeds from the adult plant or the fruits from the adult plant may just drop down and the seeds may germinate. So, there may be plenty of saplings arising from the base of the uh, what you call a parent uh, plant or the adult plant. And all these saplings need sunlight. Right. So, these saplings are going to compete with the adult plant. So, adult plant, what it does is it blocks the sunlight right? and it deprives the saplings from getting the proper sunlight for, which is essential for their growth. So, usually this kind of a behavior, it uh, actually um, results in out-competing of the, what you call ad, the adults out-competing the Saplings and it results in the death of the uh, younger ones, right? So that is why you can see that usually there is enough. Uh, there is there are different mechanisms for seed disposal. So as a result of which the seeds of a parent uh, plant it will be disposed to a distant place where the saplings once it is grown or once it is develops it needn't compete with the parent plant. Okay, so competition is less and hence it can survive. Otherwise, directly, when it is growing directly below the parent plant, it will be difficult for the saplings to outcompete the adult plant. Okay, so it may not survive the competition. Now, exploitative competition usually occur between individuals of the same population, exploiting the same resource and reducing its availability to others. Okay, and this is more obvious in, uh, usually as we have seen, it, it occurs in plants. But in the case of animals, this kind of a um, competition is uh, usually found when it includes competition between individuals belonging to different species. Okay, so exploitative competition is more prevalent in animals when the competing individuals are from two different species. Okay, exploitative competition is more um, what you call um, evident in plant community th rather than uh, animal community. Exploitative. Uh, intraspecific competition is more prevalent in plant community than in animal community. I hope it is clear. So, we can summarize intraspecific competition. It is a dens uh, density dependent competition or density dependent population interaction. And you can see uh, intraspecific competition can be both direct and indirect. And usually, uh, direct competition uh, is um, interference type where there is direct interference or direct contact interaction between individuals uh, competing while in the second one exploitative competition it is also referred as contest competition okay exploitative competition where the individuals in comp uh, competition it may not come in direct contact or direct interaction instead what happens is individuals may be one um, and the, the, when two individuals are competing, one individual may deprive a particular resource um, from the other. So, if the other one gets, um, doesn't get the particular resource, okay, so there is a, a loss suffered. Okay, okay. here you can see um, the competition among the members of the same species. The first one, it is actually a population of a particular caterpillar, not caterpillar of a particular species, uh, species of Lepidoptera. So you can see they compete for food because they are, uh, every member of the uh, 
caterpillar species it is actually feeding upon the same kind of leaf right so there is competition competition for food competition for space now another is competition for mate so these are male individuals they are uh, competing they are fighting for getting the same female so there may be a competition similarly there could be um, um, fighting for territory okay for claiming a territory there could be fights uh there could be territory marking for example in cat and dog family they urinate at various positions and mark the territory so what happens is this actually gives the message to other members of the species that this this is but this area is actually my territory and um, don't confront with me or don't come for a fight with me um, maybe that kind of a message is passed on to the uh, members of other species or the uh, particular species so territory marking and another is sharing of the same resource so there could be uh, like uh, individual like um, a number of individuals of the same species sharing a resource a particular resource it could be food within a particular limited area it could be space within a limited area so that kind of a competition is what is referred as a interference competition uh, for the first one for food and space it is interference competition that is direct competition So, uh, for meat again it is direct competition because there is direct fight okay territory marking it is actually it's uh, it could be exploitative or it could be what call um, this one also right um, uh, interference as well because um, exploitative usually it uh, keeps uh, it takes away the resource from others so that's why territory marking usually it is interference mark competition and sharing of resources again it could be exploitative as well okay so these are the uh, intra specific uh, population interaction or intra uh, specifically the competition okay the second uh, among the intra specific population interaction is the cooperation okay so in what all aspects you can see the intra specific cooperation the first and foremost is the mating mating is where male and the female individuals of the same species come together for during the breeding season okay and this uh, pairing uh, usually it is found uh, in uh, birds and mammals and uh, it could be monogamous or polygamous monogamous where uh, throughout their lifetime during the uh, breeding time the same male and the female pairs while polygamous it could be like more than uh, one can be found bond so uh, during mating the male, the male and the female they bond and there is a cooperation for reproduction and for the uh, the sustenance of the species the second one is for the parental care we can find plenty of examples for the parental care uh, where um, the individuals they come for uh, taking care of the young ones still the young ones are mature enough for their own survival um, a few examples were from uh, like uh, there are fishes wh- uh, which actually uh, keep the young ones uh, hidden inside um, so that the it is not getting predated um, for example what you have learned the sea horse okay hippocampus um, actually the female legs okay it is a males they carry in their uh, brood pouch um, the younger ones okay they remain inside and the younger ones once they hatch out the uh, eggs once they hatch out the young ones come out and uh, the, it remains inside the brood pouch okay and once in a while it comes out all together but whenever there is a, a danger it goes inside the brood pouch and remains there so that kind of a parental care is seen okay then another example you can find is like um, uh, in the case of hornbill right um malamuraki ve hornbill no in the hornbill right you may have heard about it but they what happens is um, usually during the breeding time after the mating um, the tallest and the largest uh, trunk of large trees are being located and a nest is made uh, like a hole is made in the uh, trunk and the mother or the female it goes inside and lays eggs what happens is 
the uh, opening of the hole it is sealed except for a small portion through which female can put the uh, what you call beak outside okay that is the only small hole which is kept uh, like a uh, bed and then eggs are laid inside the female lays uh, female stays inside the that particular uh, um, hole till the younger ones merge okay and till the whole time when the female is guarding the eggs the male they go outside they uh, find the food and feed the female so every time the female, the male may be found visiting the um, what you call the tree and feeding the female right if something happens to the male the female get deprived gets deprived of food and it may die off so that kind of a parental care is found over there and we can find plenty of examples from mammalian and birds uh, world about the parental care and very um, what you call uh, uh, interesting uh, things about the parental care from reptiles um, what you call this one the fishes um, uh, amphibians etc you can find plenty okay you may have found in um, uh, the um, what you call the um, this one Mm, scorpions carrying on um, the eggs and the hatch hatch out the young ones the new stage and uh, on their body so all these are actually cooperation okay intraspecific cooperation parent care is also um, found in lower animals but it is not strictly as we see in the higher ones but there is cooperation for taking care of the young ones so that kind of a care is there the next one is group formation obviously members of the same species they group together it may be for uh, like uh, for protection for defense etc and we can find three aspects of group formation one is aggregation aggregation is just a random grouping uh, due to certain reasons uh, due to certain factors uh, especially occurring in gregarious animals for example locus the best example that is only um, during a particular uh, climatic condition um, the this kind of a uh, what you call it, aggregation is found so a large men, number of uh, individuals come together and a random grouping is found okay uh, so that is a group formation another is families you can find a uh, pride uh, pride of lions pack of wolves and foxes you can see elephant herd so all these are families right then uh, you can see in social animals how the group is found uh, for example ants You may have seen the ant hill, isn't it? Um, in an ant hill, you will find a queen, you will find soldiers, you will find workers. So that kind of a, um, what a grouping is there, and each one is responsible for a particular function or a particular role in the uh, nest. Okay, so that kind of a so so society can be seen among social and insects, uh, honey bees, wasps, and termites. Right, um, there are. Like uh, if you, in, in the case of honeybees, we can see there is a queen. There is a there are uh, lot many workers, then a few uh, drones, and it is the worker group who take care of the whole uh, beehive and take care of the queen, take care of the younger ones. So all these are taken care by the worker bees. So there is a group formation, and it is it stick together. All these members stick together to form a society. So that kind of a group formation is seen as a part of the intraspecific cooperation. Now there is altruism. Yeah, it is actually the self-sacrificing behavior of an individual for the benefit of the rest of the members of the society. Okay, so that is altruism. Altruism, the word means self-sacrificing behavior of an individual for the benefit of the rest of the members of the um, society, family, or group. Okay, the best example we can have is uh, about the worker honeybee. So actually, uh, worker honeybee, uh, it is um, uh, in the case of honeybees, we have a male and female. All the males are the drones. Females, we can find two groups. One which is fertile. Okay, uh, it forms a queen, and there is only one female fertile female in a beehive, and that forms a queen. The rest of the females they are sterile. They are all sterile females, and they form the workers. Now, actually, the sterility is actually um, a one one aspect of self-sacrificing. Right. Then, secondly, these are worker bees. When they um, like uh, 
find danger or when they see some uh, like um, um, being attacked upon by something when they feel that uh, in something is uh, attacking their behavior they become alert okay and what happens is they start attacking the individual for example uh, like a human approaching the behavior or uh, someone has irritated the behavior okay disturbed the behavior so worker bees attack them okay and during the attack uh, by the worker bees they inject the sting okay now what the sting actually sting is actually the ovipositor now what is ovipositor ovipositor is actually the part of the body which is used by the female to insert the eggs or to lay the eggs so it is a part of the body okay and this uh, sting in the case of uh, worker bee it contains a, a small gland at the end okay this gland uh, which it is placed inside the abdomen you can see the picture okay so there is a sting a syringe like structure which projects out from the body and at the base of this uh, sting they have a small gland okay and this gland is placed inside the abdomen okay and when the um, worker bee it stings someone or stings the victim the oh, syringe like portion it gets stuck inside the body of the victim okay and then the worker bee it tries to escape out to to actually it struggles after sting uh, injecting the or inserting the uh, sting inside the victim's body okay and when it tries to fly out what happens is a part of the abdomen plus the sting apparatus that is the sting as well as the gland together it remains with in the in the body of the victim okay so the rest of the body it breaks off from the sting apparatus and then the worker bee flies away what happens is now the worker bee is actually damaged the body is broken it is injured it is damaged and it actually after some time it dies off so this is an altruism it know it knowing that it's it is going to die it tries to defend the uh, beehive from the danger so that kind of an altruism is same okay now next one is dominance hierarchy this is what we have already seen in the case of inter intraspecific competition as well isn't it by the threat displays Uh, by um, aggressive postures, you may have, or uh, at least in Animal Planet or Discovery Channel, you may have seen how the like um, gorillas and uh, they stand up on their two legs and beat on their chest, show aggressive postures and all. And then, so they are showing their dominance, right? The dominance hierarchy. Then um, uh, real fight among males to show their dominance in the group. So that kind of uh, uh, this one is also found. and another is leadership yeah so um, you can find that um, in mammals they move in groups so there are many mammals which move in groups they keep it they remain in groups uh, in some animals you can see it is an oldest male that is uh, actually uh, leading the group isn't it while in some other it will be the oldest uh, female so those uh, animals which do have uh, um uh, oldest female leading the group we call it as a matriarchal system okay matriarchal that is mother or female is the leader leader while in other animals where the uh, oldest male is the um, what we call uh, this one the um, leader we call it as a patriarchal group i hope it is clear elephants and all have the matriarchal system where the oldest female is the leader while the oldest male usually leads the group okay males and all once that they are um, um, what you call um, old enough it moves off from the group so the group male contains oldest female and other females and the younger ones which has to be taken care okay so that is the matriarchal group the patriarchal group we can see it in the case of apes even uh, this one also wolves and foxes and all you can see patriarchal system okay you remember the uh, that uh, jungle book movie isn't it there it is uh, the male which is leading the pack of the wolves right 
the patriarchal system. So there also there is cooperation because the dominant one, uh, it actually, uh, even though it uh, keeps the dominant position, but it cooperates with other members also, with the subordinates in the group, and it keeps the uh, group safe, right? The next one is territoriality. Yeah, here also you can see intraspecific interaction, home range and territory. Even the territory is fixed, that is, territory is an area which is dependent by an individual. Okay, so it is fixed for an individual, right? Uh, it is fixed for an individual, and it uh, usually, in most of the time, it remains inside them, right? But there is a larger area around home range, or including the home range, and so that part is known as the, I'm sorry, what you call it, the smallest area which is being defended by the organism is known as a territory, okay? And Including the territory, the area around the territory is known as the home range. Okay, territory is known as the home range. Home range is varying. Home range is the place where the particular individual animal it moves about to find the food. Okay, so depending upon the food availability, this may vary. Right, so uh, if we can see that for the home range, there could be many individuals uh, sharing. So that kind of a cooperation is found in home range. So a home range is a place outside the territory where the individuals of the same species may be sharing the resources. But when it comes to territory, it is specific for an individual. So it will defend the territory from other individuals of the same species. Okay, But in home range, it will be sharing the resources. Okay. The last one, communication. Now, um, you know what are pheromones? You know what are hormones? Isn't it? Hormones are chemicals which are produced by certain organs to communicate with the other organs. Isn't it? So that is hormones. And it is produced internally. It acts internally. But when it comes to pheromones, it is actually produced by the body. It is released to outside the body. And these uh, chemicals are meant for communicating between the individuals of the same species. So one, one member of a species releases the pheromone and it is released to outside to external environment. Usually the pheromones are volatile or gaseous in nature. So it passes through the atmosphere and it reaches the individuals of the other individuals of the same species, a communication is brought about. Okay. And these pheromones, there are different types of pheromones, like for example, alarm pheromones, the name itself says, when an individual of a species, it releases alarm pheromones, other members of the species will get the information that there is some danger in around. Okay, and the, the you know, what you call the group should be uh, alert. So that is alarm pheromone. When it comes to like trail pheromone, for example, ants, you may have seen that ants usually move along a trail. Very, very high to move here and here, along a trail. How does it know that, uh, like the um, member of the so, uh, that group has moved uh, along a particular path? How it can uh, find the trail? Actually, what happens is when an individual is moving along a trail, it releases a drop of pheromone. That pheromone is known as trail pheromone. Trail, T R A I S. It releases a trail pheromone. Okay. And uh, it is this trail pheromone which is detected by the other member of the same species. Right? And this is how it make, marks the trail and this is how it tra uh, traces the path. Okay, So that is the pheromones. I hope this is clear. Okay, Intraspecific cooperation for mating, for parental care, for group formation, uh, in altruism, in uh, leadership, in um, uh, communication and home range. Okay. Okay, so we are just going to watch the different uh, figures for, uh, under intraspecific cooperation. So first one is yeah, group formation as well as communication through pheromones in uh, honeybees in other social animals. Okay, in honeybees, uh, you can see for the communication what happens. Um, I hope you have heard about the bee dance, right? Um, just in, uh, though it is a worker bees which move uh, away from the beehive, they uh, search for the food 
for example like uh, pollen or uh, honey in the flowers etc and just imagine that two honey bees have located a food source okay a uh, garden is full of flowers right and what it does is it comes back to the beehive okay now these two have to uh, convey the message to other members or the other workers of the beehive that in this particular direction at uh, uh, like at this particular distance from the beehive there is a huge source of food this is what the communication has to be done okay and these two bees what they do is they make specific kind of movement and convey the message to the others okay they make a movement and that movement is referred as a bee dance okay so during this movement they will they convey uh, at what direction from the bee hive and with respect to sun the particular food source is present is located okay secondly at uh, what distance it is located so two information are given the direction as well as the distance okay and it is being correctly uh, conveyed and it is being uh, kept by the workers and they find the food source very accurately so that kind of a communication can be seen in the case of um, bees and the detail of that bee dance and all will be uh, you will be able to find it in youtube shows and all okay now next one is leadership behavior this is a pack of uh, foxes um, actually there you can see a group behavior they usually hunt in groups okay and uh, there could be uh, what you call uh, this one also a uh, um, leader usually it is it will be the oldest uh, male and it will decide uh, how the pack has to attack and uh, which uh, um, prey has to be uh, hunted down and all okay, that kind of a behavior then you, you can see protection yeah these are meerkats okay m e e r k a t s meerkats right you can see a snake over there uh, which is being act, um, like um, which uh, which has come into the uh, group meerkats and you can see a few of them Uh, have encircled, uh, circled around the snake, and they are all alert. Okay, the alert behavior is what is shown by the lifted up tail. Okay, and you can see the other two. It is uh, the other two. It is standing on their uh, back legs, hind legs, and it is watching somewhere else. Actually, what is doing? It is actually uh, watching whether any other predators are uh, what you call um, coming. Right. So they are alert. Right. the responsibility of those two are to uh, be alert and to uh, um, like locate their um, this one uh, right danger and all so usually eagles and kites and all they may just take away the young ones so for that sake it usually remain alert so one or two will be responsible for uh, like uh, seeing around the um, uh, that uh, area and finding whether there are any predators in the vicinity okay the last one protection usually uh, herding in groups especially the prey population it will help the uh, population the individuals of the population to be together and hence protected okay right so that is uh, interspecific now going into interspecific interaction interspecific interaction is one where two individuals belonging to two different species come and interact isn't it So there could be different. Uh, we already saw there are three different types, like neutral interactions, positive interactions, and uh, negative interactions. Okay. So we'll be looking into the detail. Now, neutral interactions they are otherwise known as neutralism. Uh, and here you can see the uh, individuals interacting. They are neither benefited nor harmed. Right. Uh, positive interactions. um if any one of the interacting species is benefited we call it as a positive interaction okay here where it can be that only one species is getting benefited while the other is not affected at all or it could be both interacting species getting benefited okay but in both the cases neither is getting harmed okay it is also known as symbiosis symbiosis the word means living together okay and here 
there are two types of uh, positive interactions mutualism where the plus and the plus it indicates two both the species both the interacting species are getting benefited okay plus means benefited two plus means both the species getting benefited both the individuals are getting benefited commensalism plus and zero plus indicating benefited while the zero indicating it is not affected at all so in commensalism two species are interacting where one species is getting benefited and the other is not getting affected at all okay now next is uh, negative interactions negative interactions uh, here what happens is um, it uh, here the interaction then interaction always have one at least one member getting harmed okay it is negatively affected so uh, it could be advantageous to one or it could be disadvantageous to uh, both either way it can okay it is otherwise known as antagonism that is like against that is it okay four major kinds are there emensalism it is just opposite to commensalism okay emensalism is where two groups are interacting where one is not getting affected while the other is negatively affected emensalism competition where the two species interacting are both getting affected in a negative way okay predation and parasitism are the interactions where two species interacting one is getting benefited and the other is getting harmed in predation there are the two species interacting are referred as predator and prey predator is getting benefit because it is getting the food prey is getting harmed because it loses its life is it parasitism where we have two interacting species one is known as a parasite and the other is known as a host okay the parasite is getting benefited while the host is getting harmed okay so these are the main types of interspecific interactions and uh, we won't be uh, we will be looking into detail uh, in the coming presentation the first one we have already saw competition uh, two species a and b are interacting Uh, both are getting affected in a negative way so each population inhibits the other second one you can see predation parasitism and bettisi mimicry you don't know what is bettisi mimicry uh, uh, here actually um, you can see in both predation and parasitism one is getting benefited the other is getting harmed okay so it is uh, population a the predator parasite or mimic it kills or exploits members of population b the population b could be prey host or the model okay in bettisi mimicry what happens is uh, there is an individual and uh, uh, another uh, species it mimics the model okay it mimics the model in such a way that it is exact mimic it confused so that kind of a, um, what do you call uh, mimicry is known as a bettisi mimicry but in bettisi mimicry usually the mimic get mimic gets benefited while the model it is getting harmed okay the third one is mutualism or and molliery mimicry in which both are getting benefited in molliery mimicry what happens is just imagine there is a uh, what you call a poisonous uh, sorry uh, yeah poisonous uh, species okay a butterfly if it is eaten by a bird the bird may get may die off. okay just imagine this is a butterfly okay if there is another butterfly but is not poisonous to escape from getting eaten by the bird what it does is it mimics the same morphological pattern as is found in the first species that is a poisonous one you are getting just imagine there is a species a which is poisonous poisonous in the sense if it is eaten the person who eats may die okay so just imagine species a is poisonous and it is having a specific coloration okay on its body maybe black and red marking there is species b but it is not poisonous for escaping from being eaten it what it does is if it is it has developed the same coloration as that of a species a it species uh, a and b may get confused isn't it same coloration same pattern so what happens is uh, both may escape being eaten okay for species b it is actually a benefit right 
So here what happens, both species A and species B are getting benefited. Such a kind of mimicry is known as Mullerian mimicry. Okay, it is getting benefit. Now, fourth one, commensalism. We are so commensalism, one is getting benefited and the other is not getting benefited. So here population A, it is the one which is getting benefited is referred as commensal and the other which is not affected is referred as a host. And then a mensalism where the one is getting benefit, uh, sorry, inhibited or uh, negatively affected while the other is not at all affected. And the last one is neutralism where both are getting, um, both uh, individuals are not affected at all, neither harmed nor um, benefited. So we will be learning it, all these uh, interactions in detail, interspecific interactions in detail, the types of interactions, the examples, etc. Okay, so with this, we have introduced intraspecific interaction, uh, intraspecific competition, intraspecific cooperation with examples. We have seen the different types of interspecific interactions. We have named them and how they are interacting also we have seen. In detail, we will be seeing it in the, uh, in the next uh, presentation. We will be seeing the uh, uh, interspecific interactions in detail.